Hello, I'm Philip Chase. Welcome to my YouTube channel on the best of fantasy. Today I'll be doing something a little bit different. As you can see, I have a very special guest with me today. This is Stephen. Stephen was a student of mine. Actually, he took a few courses with me, a glutton for punishment, I guess, right? Uh, including my fantasy novels course. Uh, which we had, a, I think we had a good time in that class, right? Fantastic time. Fantastic time. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so Stephen is actually here to help me out because um, I've noticed um, in a couple of my videos that I got some interesting responses from some viewers about video games. In particular, some uh, viewers were saying that there were some video games with good storytelling. And this was something that was quite puzzling to me because, well, I, I'll be honest with you, my idea of uh, video games is probably somewhat archaic. Uh, I'm not a video game player, probably. I'll tell you a secret. Uh, the reason I don't play video games is probably if I did, I wouldn't do anything else. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have studiously avoided them. Um, so my idea of video games probably has more to do with the, 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 the 80s or 90s at best, and maybe the 1880s. Uh, <laughs> no, so I'm familiar with, with stuff like, uh, you know, Pac-Man, you know, Space Invaders, Pong. Zelda. Zelda I've heard of, yes. I know what Zelda is, <laughs> yeah. So never played stuff like that though, so uh, I have some learning to do. Uh, I was especially intrigued, again, by this idea of storytelling. So how did video games, because my idea of video games is you go around killing stuff. Right? Um, so apparently uh, I'm wrong. So Stephen is here to educate me first uh, about how good storytelling happens in video games. And then secondly, he's gonna show me how to play, what are we playing today? The Witcher 3. The Witcher 3, okay. So I'm going into this with virgin eyes because I have not read The Witcher books yet. I'm gonna read them this summer. I have never seen the TV show and I've never played, of course, the video game. So Steven, would you mind telling us how does story, maybe this is an obvious question uh, with an obvious answer to many of you, but help me out here. How do you have good storytelling in video games? Uh, well, first of all, I don't think it's obvious um, okay. because the, the video game industry is still very new. Um, Pong came out in the early 80s, right? And that was traditionally accepted as the first video game? The Atari. Mm -hmm, right? Yeah. yeah. See, I know that. Um, and uh, video games with pretty meaty stories probably didn't come around until the mid-90s, late-90s, early 2000s. Okay, definitely late for me. Yeah. Okay. Um, but so, so as a medium, we're, we're still kind of figuring out how to, how to tell stories hmm. there. And, um, but I think that uh, video games have a very distinctive storytelling uh, capacity. Okay, all right, maybe you're gonna explain that. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there, there's four things that I want to talk about in relation to how games tell stories that's distinct from uh, movies, books, etc., other narrative forms. Okay, all right, um, intriguing, I'm intrigued. Mm -hmm. The first one is the most annoying one, I think, that like a lot of film textbooks will throw in there as how video games are so different from, uh, from films, and that's just the idea of player choice, uh, so. Oh, like those those books back in the day, like yeah. if you choose to open the door, go to page 63, if yeah. you don't, go to page, like yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so th that creates like interesting problems for the notion of fictional truth, because for instance, uh, in the Mass Effect trilogy, right there. Okay, yep, um, uh, which one is that? Mass Effect trilogy right here. Oh, gotcha, okay. Um, we have it here. In Mass Effect 2, uh, depending on choices you make in the final uh, so-called suicide mission, uh, a lot of players can die, or a lot of the characters can die. Okay. Or all of them can survive. Hmm, um, okay. Depending on choices made. Yeah. Uh, and so, it's difficult to say what actually happens in the story of Mass Effect 2, uh, because uh, depending on what you do, everyone dies or everyone lives. And um, both uh, of those storylines are canon um, in a very complicated way. 
Um, ah. So that's a problem for uh, philosophers to figure out, honestly. Um, <laughs> like you. Yeah, like me. <laughs> uh, yeah, but so that's that's the big way that uh, that the 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 popular way to distinguish video games from movies, okay, uh, books, etc. Interesting. All right, go on. Yeah, the second way that I think is really distinctive uh, that I will. Uh, Use an example for, as an example, Silent Hill 2, the game below that one. Okay, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Silent Hill 2, got it. Is, right, here we go. There's, there's much more atmospheric storytelling in video games than there is in uh, movies and books. Atmospheric, mm -hmm. okay. So the overall way that the player actual fe actually feels playing the game. Oh, yeah. And so in Silent Hill 2... She's not feeling so nice. No, she is not. Yeah. Her husband killed her. Oh! Um, <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> um, huh. Yeah. Spoilers for Silent Hill 2. Oops! Uh, <laughs> it's an outstanding game. Okay. But, but yeah, so in Silent Hill 2, what what is so unique and fantastic about that game is you walk through the, hill of, or the town of Silent Hill and there's fog everywhere and you can barely see in front of your face. Wow. Basically, the only sound is your footsteps, and every footstep that you hear is more and more terrifying and immerses you more and more into the world. Okay. Uh, and promotes the sense of, of solitude that is uh, pervasive throughout the game. Okay. The same can be said of a game like uh, Metroid Prime and really the entire Metroid series. Okay, there's uh, that Metroid, here somewhere, Metroid right? Prime's right there. Oh, gotcha. Okay, on the bottom. Yeah. All right. This one. Uh, the Metroid games are science fiction games that are renowned for uh, promoting a sense of aloneness. Cool. Um, it, very uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey kind of feeling. Oh, neat. Um, okay. But it's distinct in games because you're the one doing it, and you're the one having these emotions, okay. as opposed to okay. in films when you're seeing other people who are having emotions. So, like, so like in, in Alien, uh, Ridley's really scared of yeah, the yeah. alien. In Metroid Prime, you're really scared, scared of the alien. Interesting. So you are you telling me that the video games are an even more immersive yeah. form of storytelling? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's ha. Huh. That, that that's definitely the most obvious way that video games are different from movies and okay. books and stuff. Okay, cool. Um, two more though. Two more. Okay. Uh the one is environmental storytelling. Okay. Um, which is present in films. Um but it's different in uh, video games because films decide exactly which frames to show you. Yeah. And so the environment is actually present in each shot of a film. Okay. The environment they want you to see, for instance, in The Shining, um, Kubrick, uh, there are pictures of Kubrick like adjusting uh, cans in the background of the kitchen scene. Yeah. Um, huh. And, uh, and every shot of The Shining is littered with objects that Kubrick wants there. Pretty subtle. Uh, right, very subtle. Okay. Same thing in video games, but you don't have to come across all this stuff. Uh, you can go through um, like the entirety of The Witcher 3 without ever uh, picking up some of the lore books that describe to you uh, the history of the war between the Northern Realms and Nilf Nilfgaard. Ah, okay. So there, you're telling me that there's so much kind of World building is that is that the right word to use yeah. here? World, world building right phrase, yeah. But optional world building, huh. world building that you don't need to come across, and and that is only in place if you want to get deeper into the lore. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So that's like an author writing a fantasy book, um, and, and making up a mythology, making up a currency, making up you know things that may not even appear right. in the book, but just exist so that the author has a more three dimensional. Right. feeling for that world. Right, and a lot of times that kind of lore is published in appendix types books like uh, Silmarillion. Yeah. Right. Um, but uh, in games, it's it's in the game. You you can just okay. go find there it. There for you to discover. Yeah, it's within the work. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It's it's weird to decide if the Silmarillion is a part of the Lord of the Rings works. Right. Uh, we could have a whole video about that. Yeah. One. It's, yeah. It's a question about the ontology of art. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so th that's the first three ways. And the fourth way I think is the most important. Um, and that's story told directly through the gameplay. Okay. Um, and the example I have for this that I still think is incredible that I, I don't have a game a copy of because it's a, a digital only game. Okay. It's from a game called Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. Uh -huh. uh, spoilers for that game. 
if you haven't played it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you play two brothers on a quest to uh, heal their sick father. Okay. Right? And throughout the game, you use the left stick to control the one brother okay. and the right stick to control the other brother. Okay. And here's the big spoiler. At the end of the game, near the end of the game, the one brother dies. And so you no longer use the left stick. Oh. You only use the right stick. Oh, that's that's haunting. Mm -hmm. It's very haunting and it's and wow. it's it's weird having your hand there. It promotes the the theme of absence. Like that a is... phantom limb. Mm -hmm. Right. But wow. then but then which I still think is a brilliant moment of storytelling in, huh. in a pretty um, under-discussed game. Uh, you, the little brother who you're playing as now, because the older brother has died, can't okay. swim. Oh. So when you, when you were supposed to get across rivers, the older brother would have to pick up the younger oh. brother and swim across. Ha, huh, ha. Huh. But now, the younger brother has to swim. And so wow. you get to the edge of a beach, with the right stick, yeah, the stick of the younger brother, yeah, and in order to swim, you have to use the older brother's stick. You have to use the oh, left. but it's the younger brother doing the swimming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With the oh, that's clever, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Okay, huh? And so, ideally, uh, the gameplay of a game and the story of a game interweave in these complex wow. thematic ways. Yeah, good example. Mm -hmm. huh. And, huh. The, and the gold standard of, uh, of interweaving gameplay with narrative to, uh, to have an optional story, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. I think the very best example of a, game, of a story told in a game right now is Dark Souls. Um, okay. I think I have Dark Souls You have that one here? here. Okay. Yeah, it's one of the blue ones. One of the blue ones. There it is. Oh, it's right here. Oh, sorry. Practically yeah. on it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Dark Souls is really difficult. It looks scary. And the difficulty thereof is part of the lore of the game because it's a cruel world that where time is closing in on itself, Ooh. where the dead come back to life, and where you play the chosen undead in order to restore the age of fire, etc., etc. Look what it says. Prepare to die. Yeah. In a dramatically upgraded and different experience. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. All right, cool. Yeah. So, so those are the ways that I think um, storytelling in video games are distinctive. But additionally, um, I think uh, something that's especially relevant for you and for this channel is that I think games are in a unique position to tell fantasy stories. Interesting. Um, most importantly, I think because the idea of a quest is so important for fantasy, for traditional fantasy stories. Yeah, yeah. And it is so vital for many traditional RPG games. The gaming, yeah. Uh, for instance, uh, probably the best example is Zelda. Uh, okay, it's I'll one find of the, that. the thin red ones. I, I think it was, it, was it was near the top before. Yeah, it was at the top. You have too many games. I do. Yeah. It might be under the blue ones. Oh, yeah. Oh, here we go. Yeah. 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 So Zelda Breath of the Wild, you set off, and the end is right there. The end is immediately next to the tutorial island. Oh. You, can, you can walk in and fight the evil uh, Sauron, essentially. You can walk in and fight Ganon, but you're not strong enough yet. Oh. You need, uh, you, you technically could, and speedruns of the game do just walk in there and kill Ganon. Oh, okay. Um, but how most people play through the game is they go off, they find the Master Sword, the the sword that you find in the a, sword right to yeah become, to become the true hero that's a fantasy trope yep yeah uh you save the princess princess zelda you play as link not zelda oh zelda this is not zelda that's not zelda oh okay <laughs> that's link link yeah okay yeah. got it yeah um and and yeah so you, you go throughout the game and you level up and you become stronger and so like the 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 monomyth is, is especially present in quest-type RPG video games. Okay. Because you start off this weakling who, who can't mm. fight the big baddie, and you go through, you... you, you Rites of passage. Mm -hmm, you vanquish yeah. the divine beasts, you save a princess, and yeah. you get to the end and you finally save the world. Nice. Yeah. Sounds like fun. Yeah. Because you're more involved in a game, uh, in the story of the game, um, and in the characters of a game than you are in, uh, in a book. 
or right. etc. Right. I think the immersiveness mm -hmm. of it because yeah. you're playing as Link. Yeah. You're the one on the quest. Wow. While it while you are going on the quest. Of, so in a way, it's Bilbo. it's almost like it's not even vicarious anymore. Right. Yeah. It's huh. direct. Wow. And. That's, cool. that's the main thing. Yeah. Awesome. So that's, I mean, you made some really excellent points. I think, I feel like we're about ready to start playing a game here. Fantastic. So we're going to be playing again, the Witcher. Yeah. Witcher. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Witcher 3. Okay. Ooh. This is just telling you that CD Projekt Red made it. Oh, nice <laughs> graphics. Yeah, it's beautiful. What's that little circle? It's a loading symbol. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen one on a TV before. <laughs> no, no mouse cursor wheels this time. Ah, okay. <laughs> Witcher. Oh, that's nice. It saves my I progress. see you gather before me. Hungry, terrified, clutching your babes to your breasts. Emperor Emir has marched his legions into our lands. Why have the gods forsaken us? The offspring of that cataclysm was the nefarious always force a cataclysm. called magic. The unholy relics of this conjunction. The trolls, the corpse eaters, the werewolves. Did we raise our swords against them? I, that's a witcher, right? The time that's of Geralt. Madness. Oh, that's him. That's the main one, right? Geralt. Cool. So again, it is right. tradition for Witcher games to start with a very long cutscene. So now you'll get this. No, no, no. Let's say you'll get this, uh, this great cinematic of this stuff. Oh wow, do I, what do I do? do I Nothing. Get... Oh. This is a cutscene. You don't do anything during cutscenes. Oh, cutscenes I watch. Oh, oh, jeez, that hurt. Ah! I don't think they were aiming for her. Oh! <laughs> What's she doing in the middle of the battle? She's a sorceress. She can oh. do whatever she wants. Oh, that's how she made the bird do that. Oh, that's good. This is a great transition from cutscene directly into gameplay graphics. Oh, wow! Huh. So now it's the game. Now it's the game. Well, and what do I do? You won't be playing yet. Oh. Witcher Keep. Oh, somebody's taking a bath. That's our boy. All right. Nice, relaxing, soak in the tub. Oh, this game's easy so far. Oh, yeah. Oh. Piece of cake. Whoa, what's, whoa, wait, what's that? <laughs> oh, no! Not there! Okay, do I you do did, something? You did X. See how it says X, continue? Continue. Very good. Oh, it works. Use your Witcher senses to find the key to the bedroom door. I think I can manage that. We'll hope. Okay. All right, continue. X. Uh, I gotta find a key with my Witcher senses. Yes. <laughs> How do I do that? Oh, this is L2. Yeah, so you hold L2 to so use your Witcher senses. Do I hold it down? Yeah, hold it down. I'll keep it down. Yeah. I'm using my Witcher senses. And now move the right stick to move the camera around and look for objects highlighted in oh, red. Oh, like the vision just went, ooh, there's something red. Yeah. Okay, so I gotta turn him around. With the left stick. Oh, with the left stick. Turn around, buddy. You wanna go that way. Oh. <laughs> the right stick moves the camera. It doesn't move him. Wee. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Get back on the. There you go. Okay, this works. I just ran to the fire. Yeah, go around the fire. Okay. <laughs> Don't get mad at her. We spoiled her. Oh, I have to choose. Yeah. So you choose a dialogue option with the uh, with the left stick. Oh, okay. So you move it up and down. We, we, uh, Don't get mad at her. Oh, I don't even know who she is. The uh, Siri. Okay. So witchers are. Monster Hunters for Hire. Gotcha. They take very dangerous potions to become much stronger oh. to be able to do magic. Hence the eyes and the hair. Hence the eyes and the hair. And it also makes them sterile. Oh, so they can't make baby witchers? No, no baby witchers. Oh. Better not. Vesemir said if it does, it'll make you eat a bowl of slugs covered in salt. <laughs> You. you. <laughs> exactly. 
So you best behave. I know somebody who hates slugs. Come on, we'll practice with what? the others down below. Yeah. Shall we run the walls? Who? Guy back in grad school. <laughs> so she's Maybe racing you. Fall. Oh, how do I? What do I do? You gotta race her. I, I, but I can barely walk. Well, I guess she's gonna win. <laughs> oh, I'm passing you. Ha ha. Eat my dust, little girl. Ah! Mm -hmm. Oh, I hit Passing my head. Is oh, we're not, I won. No. Oh. Oh, we're gonna sword fight now. Oh, that's sword, right. girls. This is gonna be embarrassing. Oh yeah. Um, combat magic. Ooh, I get magic too. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. The fast attack looks like. Ha! Ah! Now keep doing fast ones. Okay, fast. Fast. You know what? He twirls a lot. Yeah. Uh, you know, strong. an actual strong attack. An actual sword play would not. Look you this would flashy. die if you twirled around, because the other guy would just stab you in the back <laughs> while you're twirling. What about that scene in uh, uh, in uh, Game of Thrones? You remember? The, the viper on the mountain. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's all twirly. Yeah, well, he died. <laughs> he did die. <laughs> when does it start? Now. Okay. Do it now. Circle? Whoa! There you go. Okay. Come on, have at thee. Whoa! You missed me. Slow poke. Okay. Ow, he hit me. Yes, he did. You jerk. What do I do? L2? R2. 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 Alright, take this. X. So many buttons to remember. A lot of buttons. That's a lot of buttons. Yeah, it's muscle memory for me, but for people who've never okay. done it, it's very difficult. And R2. R2. No. Boom! You miss. Oh, darn it. And where's the dummy? Right up, right there. The guy holding this is the dummy. You get, uh, but the other dummies are in here. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I got it. Okay, combat tutorial over. <laughs> now you can. Now we're gonna kill some monsters? Yeah, soon, soon. Okay. Uh, Something's gonna happen. Oh, uh, how can you tell? A little she devil. Whoa. Oh. Jeez, a freaking pro on a bicycle. Who's no. he? No! Oh, no. That's okay. Was that real? No. Oh. <laughs> It was a dream. The whole thing was a dream? That whole combat tutorial was My a whole dream. combat yeah. lesson? Yeah. I think it's a great way to embed a tutorial. Very instructional, though. Yeah. <laughs> you alright? I still have the unicorn? Oh, that's private. So this is really interesting. Pause right here before okay. you select the dialogue right. option. Do you, want, do you want me to like, so, literally pause? No, no, no. Oh, just okay. just wait. Um, so, she, he says there's a unicorn. Right? Yeah. What's yeah. that? And you can select that's private or stuffed unicorn. We used it as a bed once. Right. So even if you select that's private though, you still know as the player, as Geralt, that they used it as a bed. Oh, because I read the dialogue. Yeah. Oh. So see. it's a really interesting way to tell you about it. Gotcha. Without it actually being a oh, part yeah. of the story. Clever. Yeah. So mind your own business, old dude. That's private. That's private. Uh oh. Cool. Here comes the monsters. Ah! Okay. What do I do? Silver Life sword. Life. So hit X and start the fight. Okay, but I don't know what I'm doing. Oh yeah, you do. You've just learned. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You're playing. You're playing. Oh my god. Okay. Ready? It's okay. It's very low Wait. difficulty. You Left moves. Left moves. Right okay. moves the camera. Right moves the camera. Oh. Who moves oh. it? I did it. Oh, there's another one. Oh. Oh. I did it. Who moves it? Who's that other guy? There's two behind. Where's the other guy? Isn't he helping me? Yeah, he is. Where's the old dude? He's fighting one of the ghouls. Oh. Come here. Oh. There you go. Yeah. Got them all. It's pretty good. I think I better take off the tweed here. Oh, yeah. Oh. Let's get real serious now. It's just the big guns are coming out. <laughs> oh. I need a maximum arm rotation mm -hmm. for this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Uh, what do I do now? So this is R3. Yeah. Uh, look, look here. Yeah. R3. L3. Oh, you're L3. Yeah. So you push okay. Oh, L is left. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you'd get that. R is right. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. 
<laughs> God, this is gonna be much easier now. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I ate something. Yeah, you ate, you ate a horse. Or you <laughs> I ate my you horse! Ate, you, ate, you ate some bread. <laughs> okay. So it regenerated a little health. All okay, right. so now, you press it twice. I, I kind of messed up. Oh! There he whistles. And now you see the horse slowly coming towards you on the mini map. It's Shadow Facts. There it is. Where's my heart? Turn the Ooh, camera. mystical light. Oh, I'm looking the wrong way. Yeah. Uh, uh, There's Roach. Oh, he's right behind me. Sheep. Oh, okay. She's right behind. Hi, sweetie. How did I do that? Wins the war. Believe that. Get back on the trail, Nelly. That's what or keeps Roach. us going. Uh, you see the red dots on the map? Not so yeah. Fast, Roach. Those are some drowners. What are drowners? Uh, people who have drowned, who have come back to life. That doesn't sound good. No, it's pretty unfun. Should I kill him? Put him out of their misery? Do you want. Okay. There you go. Is that it? You killed the drowners. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I gotta go back to that old guy who was useless. You gotta go to your horse. Right. Mushrooms. Heart, yeah. He's not a hobbit, so he doesn't have to eat the mushrooms. No, he doesn't. Oh, holy cow, what is that? It's a wolf. Oh, can't kill it. Ah, whoa, no! Okay, Swear and try. Swear. <laughs> Got the one. Now we're on the path. Oh, wait, I ran over the lady! <laughs> Sorry! She's not taking a bath at the castle yet? still? No. Oh, okay. She's actually never been there. What? Yeah. Oh, was that just a weird dream? Yep. Yeah. Oh, what is that? Ugh! Oh, I don't know. Can we take this thing? Oh, I guess I don't have a choice. It's bleeding. Yes, it is. Look out! I need to get back to an inn or something now. To the inn. The inn. Get on the horse and get to the inn. Alright, get on our you want to get me on the horse? It's right there. Oh, is it behind me? Yeah. Oh, turn around. Do you see the horse icon in the mini map? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, there you are! There you are! What was your name? Roach. Roach! There you are, baby. I, I'm getting this. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting the hang of this. Yeah, you are. Oh, I just ran over somebody. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, God. How do I not run over people? Where, where did he go? He turned into a tiny. What? Why didn't I turn into a tiny? Because it's not on the road. Excuse me. Sorry I ran over you. Oh. Ooh. Just don't circle to get off. My bad. You really shouldn't be riding the horse. Uh, dismount. Hold it. Oh. Don't touch me. Sorry. Didn't mean to. <laughs> talk. No, I don't think she wants to talk yeah. to me now. Okay. Uh, Roach, stay. Oh, beer. You came to the right place. Mm -hmm. Well, Steve and I, I want to thank you for introducing me to The Witcher 3 and for your really excellent explanation of how storytelling works in video games. I feel like I'm a, a lot more informed on that now and I can appreciate um, really the, the depth and, and the immersion and everything else. I mean, I just kind of really just scratched the surface here a bit, but I really appreciate your tutorial and I feel like I've... I've uh, I'm much more informed than I was before. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Happy to do it. Awesome. And I'll be doing another uh, video uh, next week on uh, some great fantasy. So I hope that you will join me for that. Until next time.